Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. My name is Holly. Hi, Sarah. My name is April. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. I have a question about... My name's Julianne, and we live in India. I am wondering... Hi, Sarah. This is Crystal from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Can you give me a suggestion for an especially fabulous book? Hey there, I'm Sarah McKenzie. This is the Read Aloud Revival. And in this short episode, I'm answering one of your questions. Hi, Sarah. This is Sarah. My question is, how do you find a book that keeps an eight-year-old and a four-year-old actively engaged while you're doing your read aloud? Hey, Sarah. Okay. uh, First thing that comes to mind is picture books. Uh, Picture books almost necessitate our kids to be actively engaged because they're looking at the pictures as we're reading aloud the words. And your eight-year-old is definitely not too old for picture books. Um, We've talked about this recently on the show, but I'll say it again because it's so important. Uh, Picture books tend to have more sophisticated language patterns, better word choice, vocabulary, diction, more sophisticated, rich, and beautiful language than chapter books and novels. So when we go from reading picture books up to reading novels, we're actually taking a step down in the beauty and complexity of the language. This is just really helpful to remember. So if picture books keep both of your kids interested, I'd stay with picture books longer and not even feel the need to really move up to anything else yet. Now, a couple of specific recommendations. Torben Coleman, K-U-H- L-M-A-N-N, I believe. His books would be a good fit here. They're called Armstrong, Edison, Lindbergh, um, Moletown, I think is another one. They're basically a hybrid between a picture book and a chapter book because they, they have longer text, a longer story, but tons and tons of full color, really big illustrations. They're gorgeous. Another really good recommendation would be Jonathan Augier's Fabled Stable series. Starts with uh, Willa the Wisp. The second one is uh, something about t- the truth about tattletales or something like that. Is tattletales is in the uh, title, and he wrote those with the intention of being read aloud to various ages. He's a father. And he wanted a read aloud that would engage his older kids and his younger kids at the same time. He's also a fantastic author. And that's longer than a typical picture book. And it doesn't look like a picture book either. It looks like a a chapter book. So that might help your older uh, older child. I think I was assuming you had a son. Might not be a son. Uh, You're an eight-year-old. But another thing just to keep in mind, though, is you don't need to move out of picture books. So if that still engages your eight-year-old and your four-year-old, stick with those. They're going to get so much good language for those. You don't need to move up because, like I said, moving up is not exactly moving up when we're talking about complexity of language. When you when you do want to include some chapter books and novels, I would encourage you to keep reading the picture books. So don't replace picture books with chapter books and novels. Just expand it. So we're talking about, like, if you can imagine, it's not a ladder where we go from picture books to chapter books or novels. They're more like expanding concentric circles where we're reading picture books and now we're also reading picture books and chapter books or novels. A few that work really well for four and eight are the My Father's Dragon series. The first one's just called My Father's Dragon. It's by Ruth Styles Gannett. We will put this in the show notes. It is an excellent first chapter book. In fact, all six of my children, (laughs) this was the very first successful chapter book that I read aloud to them that engaged them. They loved it. It's short and funny and interesting. Um, and even my twins now, who are eight now, they when they were four, this was the first longer narrative that I read to them. The Mouse and the Motorcycle by Beverly Cleary is also an excellent choice for one of your very first longer narratives because it's very interesting and pretty quick paced and um, everybody loves Ralph, the mouse. So um, The Mouse and the Motorcycle might be another good choice. And then the other thing to keep in mind is when you're reading aloud a novel or something that does not have as many pictures, let your kids do something with their hands. My kids are always doing something with their hands. There's some interesting research that shows for a lot of kids when they're doing something with their hands, they're listening better and paying attention better. So you could have some coloring books, you could have stencils, uh, Play-Doh, any kind of thing they can, even playing with Legos, like a small set of Legos that you have out. 
uh, that can keep their hands busy will free them up to listen really well. And we did a whole episode on this. It's episode 73. So you can go to readaloudrevival.com slash 73 or just go back and look for it in your podcast app. Um, and I t- we talk about just ideas for different ages for keeping their hands busy during read alouds. But I almost always, well, before we do a read aloud, give my kids a five or 10 minute warning and say, get stuff to do. I'm reading aloud in five or 10 minutes. And then they can go get whatever it is, whether it's finger knitting or for older kids like crochet or their sketchbooks or their knitting needles or for younger kids, it might be Play-Doh or a coloring page or, you know, paper dolls or something. And that way they keep their hands busy while I'm reading. And there's a whole list of ideas of things to keep their hands busy at that episode 73. I hope that helps. Uh, the books I recommended to you in this show are in the show notes at readaloudrevival.com slash 187. So if you wanted those titles again, you can just head to readaloudrevival.com slash 187 to see them. Thanks so much for that question, Sarah. Now let's hear from a couple of kids about the books that they're enjoying. Hi, Grace Dixon. How old are you? Three. And where do you live? South Carolina. What's your favorite book? West Baby's Mommy Has Hide and Seek. <laughs> I Want the Bell. What's your name? Bear. And how old are you, Bear? Three. Bear, where are you from? Lebanon, Ohio. Lebanon, Ohio. And what's your favorite book? Armadillo Rodeo. Armadillo Rodeo by Jan Brett. What do you like about Armadillo Rodeo? The border. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Taylor. I am 11 years old. I live in Ottawa, Tennessee. My favorite book is Frindle by Andrew Clements. I like this book because this boy um, makes up a funny word because his teacher said that he can make up a funny word and he becomes a fam- famous. Thanks for listening. If you've got a question for an upcoming episode, leave me a voicemail at readaloudrevival.com slash message. Until next time, go make meaningful and lasting connections with your kids through books. So many of us feel overwhelmed in our homeschool. There's a lot to do, and it feels like every child needs something a little different. The good news is, you are the best person on the planet to help your kids learn and grow, and home is the best place to fall in love with books. I'm Sarah McKenzie. I'm a homeschooling mother of six, the author of Teaching from Rest and the Read Aloud Family. And I'm the host here on the Read Aloud Revival Podcast. This podcast has been downloaded over 8 million times. And you know, I think it's because so many of us want the same things. We want our kids to be readers, to love reading. We want our homes to be warm and happy havens of learning and connection. We know that raising our kids is the most important work of our lives. That's kind of overwhelming, right? You are not alone. In Read Aloud Revival Premium, we offer family book clubs, a vibrant community, and Circle with Sarah coaching for you, the homeschooling mom, so you can teach from rest, homeschool with confidence, and raise kids who love to read. Our family book clubs are a game changer for your kids' relationship with books. We provide you with a family book club guide and an opportunity for your kids to meet the author or illustrator live on screen. So all you have to do is get the book, read it with your kids, and make those meaningful and lasting connections. They work for all ages, from your youngest kids to your teens. Every month, our community also gathers online for a circle with Sarah to get ideas and encouragement around creating the homeschooling life you crave. They're the most effective way I know to teach from rest and build a homeschool life you love.
We want to help your kids fall in love with books, and we want to help you fall in love with homeschooling. Join us today at rarpremium.com.